Hello, I'm Greg Solomon. Now folks, my black hole video is just temporarily on hold because I felt it incumbent upon me to first make a video and say a few words concerning the recent YouTube Live event and some associated missed opportunities due to the, the timeliness and the relevance of this subject matter, I thought I should make a video now instead of first making a video about uh, the black holes. Now, what do I mean about missed opportunities? Well, what I'm speaking about mainly is, well, you know better yet, let me just give you an example because I feel that I can illustrate my point better by just giving you an example and the individual I'm going to use to give you my example is an individual who goes by the name of Bo Scheme. Now, a Bo Scheme has somewhere in the neighborhood of I'm going to say around 40,000 subscribers, somewhere in that neighborhood. If you go to his channel, one of the first things you will see on his channel's home page is a rhetorical question in which he asks, where have all my subscribers gone? The reason he asks that is because the majority of his most recent videos seem to be struggling to even get about a fifth of that amount of views. Is it nowhere near the amount of subscribers that he has or watching his videos? No, not even close. And this is a guy who is, was at one time in the top ten. Now, what do I mean by missed opportunities here in using this fellow as an example? Now, this fellow was he had his videos uh, featured before, and, and YouTube actually helped him to get those 40,000 subscribers by featuring his videos. And uh, I don't know, I, I'm going to say they probably featured, I'm, I'm going to guess and say about three of his videos probably were featured. And that, and that helped him substantially. At, at, at one time, actually, he was in the top ten most subscribed of all time. <laughs> not anymore, he's not. But he was at one time. Anyways, um, he got frustrated because his viewership started uh, declining. I think one of the reasons his viewership started declining dramatically was due to the fact that he made a couple of videos out here in which he essentially begged for money. They came out basically with his hat in his hand. He even said so in one of his videos. I'm, I'm uh, coming to you with my hat in my hand because I need money. And I need you folks to send me some money. Uh, he, he, he moved out to California last year and he wanted the viewers of YouTube apparently to finance his trip and I, I think some of them actually did. Some of them were actually gullible enough to do so. But anyways, he, he made a couple of, uh, as I said, begging videos in which he begged. Not just once, but twice. And there might have been more, two that I saw for sure. Uh, and, and when people would, would write him or message him, uh, um, some some people did. They messaged him and asked him about this, you know, wanting this money and why he wanted it and whatever. And he essentially uh, made a video and essentially told them that he was offended by such questions, offended by the notion that someone would actually inquire of him why he wanted this money and what was his reason for coming out here and asking for this money. He said that was very offensive to him implying that he was lazy and possibly not working for his money. He, he, he assured the viewers that if he was asking for money, they could rest assured that he had a good reason for doing so. Okay, anyways, I think that helped and contributed to his downfall, his downward slide, and his viewership getting less and less and less. People said, yeah, that's not going to watch this nonsense, got here begging for money. It's ridiculous. I've come out here to relax on YouTube. 
enjoy a nice uh, beverage and uh, enjoy some videos. I don't want to come out here and listen to some guy beg for my money. And, and I think they just start, stopped watching him and his viewership started to decline. Well, in a fit of frustration and irritation several months ago, he uploaded a video clip in which he dissed not only YouTube itself, but he actually went so far as to diss the viewers of YouTube. In fact, he actually called the viewers of YouTube retards. Now, I don't like using that term, and I'm just mimicking and repeating what he said, but he actually called them retards. He didn't just imply it, he actually called them retards. He was quite irritated in that video. I, I don't know, some of you might have seen that video. Uh, he was actually scolding the viewers. What's wrong with you people watching the junk that you watch now on the crap? And he called them retards for watching it. Uh, I guess the reverse would be they'd be intelligent if they were watching his videos, but seeing as how they were, his viewership was dropping and they were looking over here and watching these videos, that now they were retards. And he also went on to diss YouTube about the way they, they were running the system and they, the way they were running the site. And he was quite irritated and he uploaded that video and even suggested that he might not make any videos for a while. Uh, he even went so far, uh, so far as to once suggest that if he wasn't sent a certain amount of money, he would have to quit making videos because it, of course, costs money to make videos, according to him. Anyways, after he uploaded that video in which he dissed YouTube and the viewers, um, a certain amount of time went by and there started to be some chatter in the community, some noise in the community about a possible upcoming YouTube live event broadcast from California and simulcast live on YouTube in which certain YouTube celebrities would be invited out to California to participate. Well, this is exactly what Bo Scheme had moved to California for, to get some publicity, to uh, to break into the, uh, I don't know, the entertainment business or uh, somehow to publicize himself more. So this was right up his alley. This is something that he was actually looking for. I mean, this, this is something that, this isn't a golden opportunity for him. This would have been the a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, so to speak. So right around that same time, when it was announced that YouTube would indeed be uh, having and broadcasting a YouTube live event, and Mr. Boskim, in an obvious attempt at damage control, removed his video clip in which he dissed YouTube and dissed the viewers. And in its place, he uploaded another video clip in which he extolled the merits of YouTube a very syrupy, sweet video clip in which he graciously thanked the viewers out here. Completely opposite from the other video clip. As I said, obvious, uh, an obvious attempt at damage control because he realized that by posting that other video clip and now there was going to be a YouTube live event, he realized that he had screwed up. His uh, damage control video clip actually turned out to be too little, too late. Because that first video clip was well ingrained within the memory of the powers that be at YouTube. So when they were putting together the YouTube live event, Mr. Boskim was slighted and he was not invited. That rhymes. I'm a poet and didn't know it. Anyways, so, Mr. Boskin was slighted and he was not invited. He was so close, actually out there in California, looking for some sort of an opportunity just like this. So close, and yet so far away. Now, I made a couple of video clips several months ago in which I admonished people don't bite the hand 
that feeds you. That hand being YouTube. And by feeding you, I mean uh, allegorically, just an analogy, feeding you, uh, giving you an opportunity out here to, to, to publicize yourself and to uh, put your videos out here, giving you a, a medium in which to upload your videos. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, I admonished in one of my videos a few months ago. In another one of those videos, I admonished viewers not to stab YouTube in the back. Now, had Mr. Boskim taken to heart the admonitions of mine in those videos several months ago, instead of sitting home on that night when YouTube Live was broadcast, instead of sitting home smoking a stale cigarette and watching it on his computer, he would have actually been there at the YouTube Live event in person. And he would have been there on stage because I'm sure he would have been invited had he not made that video in which he dissed YouTube. He would have been invited and he would have been on stage. And at one point during that, that event, I feel very certain that the camera would have focused on him and he would have been able to look in that camera and he would have been able to say the following. Hi kids, I'm Voskim. But guess what? That didn't happen. Because he screwed up. So again, let me take this opportunity to tell you, and when I say you, I mean collectively you, because Mr. Boskim, it's too late for you. You missed the boat. You screwed up. But for those of you who have, who have just recently uh, established YouTube accounts, or those of you who are uh, kind of climbing up the ladder and getting more and more viewers. Take my admonition to heart. The admonition that Boskim obviously did not take to heart and just obviously just brushed off. Take my admonition to heart. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Don't stab YouTube in the back. You see, granted, I, I have made some videos out here. You can look in my video catalog and you'll see that I've made some videos, indeed, in which I push the envelope a little bit. But I never make a video out here that I think might piss off Chad Hurley or Steve Chen or anyone else in the home office. You see, as I've said before, when they come in in the morning at the home office and get the pot of coffee on, I want them to sit back and they look at the videos or some recent videos that were uploaded. But when they see a Greg Solomon video, I want them to sit back and, and enjoy it. Now, uh, I would much prefer Chad Hurley to sit back with his morning coffee and donut and, and relax and enjoy my video instead of uploading a video and have Chad Hurley say, you know, this guy pisses me off. I don't like this. No. As I said, I want him to relax with his morning coffee and donut and sit back and, and enjoy my video. Don't piss YouTube off. Don't stab YouTube in the back. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, people. And that, Mr. Boskim, is the admonition that you should have taken to heart. You screwed up. And you know it. And I can only imagine that evening, that YouTube live event, after it was over, you were probably just, uh, you may just laying in bed probably, oh, geez, I screwed up. How can I 
idea. Why did I upload that video? I can just imagine you, Mr. Boskeen. And it started off way back there with your begging videos. And you screwed up. Missed opportunities. The opportunity was there. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow was there. The opportunity was in your hand and you let it slip through your fingers. Until next time, everyone, this is Greg Solomon saying take care.